Well, a major update today in the extradition case of Julian Assange uh, was handed down today from a UK court in London. Will he be extradited to the United States after all, where he will surely die in a supermax prison um, or worse, if you can imagine that? Independent journalist Richard Medhurst has been covering the story from the very beginning. He's been in the courtroom in London repeatedly and was handed these documents today by the court. And uh, we were all waiting with bated breath, Richard, at 10.30 Eastern Time, London Time today. What were we going to hear? So it's 66 pages. You've gone through all the details of it. What did we learn today? What is the fate of Julian Assange? Well, uh, it's a bittersweet uh, victory, and it reminds me of um, the, the original ruling in, in 2021. So on, on the surface, it looks good. It sounds great that they blocked the extradition. But it's only it, it's a temporary thing, and uh, uh, if you if, if um, you know you've gone through the the ruling like I have, uh, there are tons of things actually that that are really not good. Um, you know, just for starters, for example, they've thrown out the bulk of the case. They've said all, on all of these grounds, there's no appeal. For, for one of them, for example, is the the CIA plotting to kill him. Uh, you know, they, they said it's, it's just not relevant. Um, things like uh, the fact that he's being extradited for uh, a political opinion, they say, yeah, you know, well, um, it, it's not relevant, and which is very shocking. Uh, you know, so it's not just about the CIA. I, I know that one attracts a lot of headlines, but just in general, every point was quite shocking. And so the way it goes now is that the United States, they have about three weeks to, to present uh, assurances that they will not kill Julian Assange. Uh, that they will not give him the death penalty because in the United States it's a capital offense, uh, whereas in Britain you know it's illegal to extradite someone to a country that has the death penalty. So, uh, or at least that will uh, that they, that is certain to give someone the death penalty. So that's number one. Number two, they have to give assurances that Julian Assange will be treated like an American citizen, that he will be given uh, First Amendment rights, which which might sound quite which might sound quite shocking because if he's being prosecuted under U.S. law, then why isn't he given protections under U.S. law? It's very unfair application of, of things. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they also have to get the Secretary of State, which is the uh, Foreign Secretary, to uh, also get, um, you know, uh, uh, adequate insur uh, assurances from the United States. So if they don't do this, um, then they will just automatically allow Assange to appeal on those grounds. However, if the United States, let's imagine that they, they give some, some piece of paper to the, to the British government and the British government is pleased, then, then you know, we, we, basically, we basically have no grounds left to appeal on. And, um, well, it gets very ugly after that, you see. So uh, e even if, if uh, it looks good on the surface, all, during all this time, Julian Assange is still stuck in uh, Belmarsh, which is like, you know, the British equivalent of Guantanamo Bay. So he's still suffering, um, uh, you know, no matter what the victories are in court. Uh, and unless he's discharged, it's just a continuation of, of uh, you know, prosecuting a journalist. That's what it is. So hopefully you can help me unpack this a little more and explain it to me as if I'm a fifth grader yeah. because it's, it's so complex here. So let's just unpack a few pieces of this here. Number one, yeah. while this is happening, he's still stuck in Belmarsh. They're not just going to let him out to be with his family while this whole process is still unfolding. He's been there for, what, four years now? Yes, that, that, uh, almost, almost five, actually. It, the anniversary of when they dragged him out is, is five years in, in April. So um, that, that's correct. He's in prison. And it's not just a prison, it's the worst prison in England. And right. he is, he's not actually been convicted of a crime. And it's for a bail violation originally. A, no one in England, in England, a bail violation is not a serious thing. You don't, you don't get uh, sent to, to, sometimes you don't even get sent to prison. And you certainly don't get the maximum 51 weeks, which they gave him. And you certainly don't get sent to Belmarsh, which is the, the you know, it's a category A, so a maximum security prison. Usually you have people like rapists, you know, Al-Qaeda members. It's funny because Al-Qaeda members in Belmarsh prison have been treated better than Julian Assange in the past. So, yeah. So he'll still remain there. A uh, fr friend of the show, uh, Tucker Carlson, told us, uh, you know, when he saw him, he, he was shocked. I mean, he was shocked at how yes. what he looked like. Um, so he's absolutely yeah, he's, he's absolutely suffering. He, he is. Well, I, I actually... I've seen him several times uh, uh, in court, um, almost every single time he, he was there. Th this last uh, hearing, so um, on February 20th and 21st, he, he applied to come. He, he was given permission, but he ended up not coming uh, um, of his own accord because he was too sick. 
uh, he had a cough, um, a persistent cough. And um, one time when I saw him, I actually, it took me a minute to realize that I was looking at him. I, I, I thought it, it was someone else. I don't know, my brain just didn't register because we were just getting, we're just sitting down, we're just getting the whole thing started. I didn't understand it was him. He looked so old. I swear to God, I, it took me a minute, and and uh, yeah, that's how bad he, that's that's how bad of a condition he's in. So that's the that's that part of it. He'll remain there, unfortunately, while this appeals process is playing out. On the American side, they have to provide these assurances that he won't be killed. So they have a three week yeah. deadline to do that. Uh, I imagine they'll probably hit that deadline. And then what? What what does the Assange team do next? They can reply. Uh, they they also there's also a fixed uh, deadline for that so um, they they can then reply to these assurances and then the Americans can reply to their reply if that makes sense so back and forth back and forth and like then exactly. and and then we'll get a decision as to whether or not he can go forward with an appeal I mean it seems like they're saying we we don't really want to handle this this should be open to an appeal like you're you have valid yeah. you have valid arguments here before we get to the appeal. We're worried, we're waiting on the Americans to say that they're not going to kill you. Exactly. Yeah. So so it's back and forth, and then there could be on May twentieth a a hearing um, if uh, you know it's um, if if Assange's team present valid points to the points put forward by the Americans in their appeal. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. It's, it's really ridiculous. It's it's so it's so absurd. And you know what, what's what's weird to me is that the 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 uh, case is very clear cut, you know, um, it, it should have been thrown out. I mean, to, just to give you an example, when, when you're spied on, like the government spies on you for, for, and then they try to use that in court, even, even if you're charged with, with a, I don't know, a parking violation, it would be thrown out, you know, um, never mind CIA is spying on you and you're inside an embassy and you, you're, you know, um, you, you're in a foreign country. I mean, there, there's so many layers of illegality and criminality to this case. It's truly, Truly stunning. Beggars believe how it's been allowed to continue. And it really makes a mockery of, of, of English courts. You know, when I go in there and I sit there, I, I don't feel like I'm, I'm really sitting in an independent judiciary. Some of the court staff, I was even talking with them and they, they asked me that question, which to me was already like, they know what's going on. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that it wasn't one of the, the lawyers or something like that, but the people in the court who work there, they, they know that it's not an independent judiciary, that it's being run by the Americans. It, it, it's... Um, you know, and again, I, I always draw to this hypocrisy. Like, if you're going to charge someone with a U.S. law, um, how can you say that once he's in America, you won't apply the full United States Constitution uh, and, and, and rights to him? You know, it's, it's so unfair. It's so biased and, and um, unbalanced. So a few key things that you mentioned there are being thrown out. I, I was stunned. You, the, the CIA piece, I you know, yes, that has obviously made a lot of headlines. CIA Director Mike Pompeo targeting Julian Assange for assassination, right? Yeah. That's a huge piece and a compelling argument to not be sent to the United States. They were trying to actively kill me. Uh, the other piece, though, I thought was stunning as well, this idea that he's not, that they weren't going after him for political reasons. Like, that, they don't think that that part of the argument is relevant? What? That's the, yes, that's that, to what, me, that's was, the crux of it. Second. Yeah, that was in the ruling today, uh, which, again, I, I, I laugh because, you know, it's so ridiculous. They, they, they also said something else that basically the, the idea that, well, they're trying to kidnap me, or, or let, let's say it's, it's uh, in, the, in the third present. So let's say that the, the idea they're trying to kidnap Julian Assange and take him to America doesn't matter if he's extradited. Yes, well, that's the point. <laughs> it, it, they actually wrote this. They said it, we don't need to look at it or consider it because if, if the extradition goes ahead, well, guess what? He, they, they, he can't be kidnapped anymore because he's already in America. <laughs> uh. it, it's it's really unbelievable so is this a victory for the assange team a small victory it, it is it is a small victory uh it, it is a small victory but you know i want to talk about these assurances because i've done a significant amount of work on them so uh, inside of the courtroom when, when we were still at the stage where assange had, had won he blocked the extradition because of his health and now the Americans are trying to appeal it. And, and so to appeal it, they said, we'll treat him nicely. Now, in 2024, we know that these don't suffice. But back in 2021, Assange's team were trying to show examples to the court of people who had been extradited to America. And then once they were in the United States, the United States government 
um, you know, basically threw the assurances they had given in the trash out the window. And one of these cases is a man, is a man called David Mendoza. And he was sent from Spain to the United States on, on condition that once he's tried uh, and if he's convicted, he goes back to serve a sentence in Spain. Very clear cut case. Um, and he didn't just get assurances because we have to remember that assurance sounds uh, bigger than it is. It, it, it's, it's a non-binding piece of paper. It's, it's just a piece of paper. It's not a contract. But that guy, Mendoza, he got an actual contract, a legally binding contract. I published it um, uh, with the signature of the, the um, you, uh, you know, this woman who works at the U.S. Embassy, Vice. Uh, and uh, I, I published the, the DOJ and the State Department documents, uh, these classified documents, proving that, that he had been given this deal. And then when he got to America, they violated the deal. And uh, then he had to sue the, Sp the Sp uh, Spanish government and the American government. And keep in mind, he's a dual citizen. He's an American and a Spanish citizen. So he, these are... Both of these are his country. And, you know, I just want to be clear that this man was not a political target. Mendoza was not a political target like Assange. It was just some, about something with, for, for marijuana in a state where it's, it's legal now on top of it. So it's, it's not even comparable to, to this state, uh, you know, this kind of political um, um, case that Assange is in. And they still violated that. So what do you think they're going to do to Assange? Would they, would they not violate it if they have a history of violating agreements? Absolutely. You know, and I, and I think it's wrong for the British government to just blindly trust um, the American government, especially when this, this case was cited in the court. So I'm shocked that the, the judges back then looked at it and found nothing wrong with it. There's everything wrong with it, everything from A to Z. Um, and so, you know, it, as I said, multiple layers of criminality, multiple layers of, of um, you know, irregularities here, both on the British and the American side. Yes, the British government absolutely under the thumb of the United States doing its bidding once again, uh, as we see, whether it's in Ukraine or here in this situation. Yeah, um, yeah and, and I'll get you out of here on this, Richard, which is the, the argument from the Assange team, of course, is that they were under, uh, that they will, they will not be safe, of course, when they get to the United States. And the United States has a track record of this, that Julian Assange has only, was only been there for, I think, like one afternoon for like a brief amount of time. He wasn't even in, in the United States, or maybe it was a few days. Uh, that's it. He wasn't there for very long. Yeah, they, they or yeah. I think maybe once work or something, but, but he never lived or, or, or worked in the United States. On top of that, the, the argument that you, the United States has made, of course, is that people's lives were ruined and this put members of the CIA or others in danger, the U.S. military in danger by releasing these WikiLeaks documents and, we, you know, and, and showing the world these war crimes. So uh, what? My, my, my answer is so what? Right. Yeah, yeah, on top be, of it. Yeah. yeah part, first part of it is, yeah, so what? Uh, second part of it is, so people are carrying out war crimes and we're concerned about those individuals. First part, yeah, right. so what? Second part is, there's no evidence of that at all. Uh, in this Correct. document, in this document, did they throw that part of it out or was that relevant in this argument, in this decision today? Um, yeah, so they, br they brought it up, of course. Um, and they, they are basically saying that, yes, the, the judge in the lower court um, was, was correct um, to, to, uh, to basically agree that, yes, Assange, he exposed state crimes, but it doesn't matter. So that, that's it. That, that's the ruling of today, and they're agreeing with the, with the lower ruling. They're saying, yeah, Assange expo exposed these gross you know, state crimes, uh, how Britain was training death squads in Bangladesh, how the American government was subverting European governments who were trying to try CIA agents, how they were, um, how CIA agents were torturing people in uh, uh, European citizens, kidnapping them off of the street and just, you know, taking them to black sites. They mention all of this in today's ruling. They agree and they acknowledge all of it, but they say it doesn't matter. It's, it's not the substance of the crime. And my favorite part is like, what, what is their proof for this to, to, to establish that it, it has no relevance? I mean, they, they say... We know that the United States are doing a good job and, and they, they are only prosecuting Assange out of the goodness of their hearts because a U.S. federal prosecutor told us so. And Mr. Assange never accused them of being dishonest. Hmm. I mean, when you, <laughs> I, I find this really incredible because I was there in the courtroom when this, when I, when this prosecutor, his name is Kromberg. So he's an AUSA. He's a special federal prosecutor for the United States. And he, I mean... He is absolutely, absolutely 100% being dishonest. 
Um, I thought that was obvious uh, through the fact that, you know, Assange's team are bringing up all of this uh, behavior by the U.S. government. The fact that they've tried to subvert um, Assange's defenses by spying on his lawyers and his conversations. And for some reason, the British judges don't think it's relevant. And uh, they, uh, they think that Mr. Kronberg is an honorable uh, man and uh, that he's doing his prosecution uh, against Assange just, you know, because it's the right thing, the legal thing to do. Hmm. I, I said I was going to get you out of here a second ago. I have one more question, which it, is... La- it's okay. I'm more than happy to, to talk about this. <laughs> well, just, it just occurred to me, we heard a report from the Wall Street Journal in an exclusive report about a week ago that this ruling was coming down or some sort of a, uh, some sort of a plea agreement was going to be worked out where the Assange team would then plea to ha- mishandling classified information. It would be sort of a lesser offense and, and all of that. Uh, the, the Assange team, to my knowledge, said that there's no truth to that. Uh, and yeah. the Wall Street Journal said this is an exclusive report. Does today's ruling shed light to say that the Wall Street Journal was was full of shit? Yes, <laughs> it does. Yeah, unless unless there's there's um, we we have to be very clear about this because uh, the the United States, it, you know, this is the second administration uh, that's pursuing this case. I mean. Uh, Donald Trump and and Mike Pompeo are the ones who launched this uh, attack on the press. Uh, You know, uh, Joe Biden and the Democrats have continued what Trump begun. And, uh, you know, Joe Biden had four years to drop the case. He's not going to do that, especially in an election year. Um, And again, looking at at, at this ruling, you know, it's just like regurgitating these same old lies against Julian about like, you know, um, uh, trying to endanger the lives of informants, which, by the way, just to go back to that point br- very briefly, uh, the the U.S. Army investigated this themselves when they were court-martialing Chelsea Manning, and they found no evidence of it. So, um, you know, it, 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 I almost I don't understand why why the British judges don't grasp this point that what America is accusing uh, Julian Assange of was disproved by the American government. In any case. The, the, the idea that Julian Assange would be given some sort of, um, you know, um, uh, like a, a misdemeanor or, or that they would, you know, bring the charges down. I mean, uh, they, he's being hit with 175 years in, in total if we, we put these charges uh, together. So even if you go down, like how, how far can you go down from 175? If they go down to 10 years, they will just make their case look ridiculous. Um, all this effort for what? And I think it would be a mistake for for Julian's team to accept any any agreement because uh, when I was when I was in the hearing uh, uh, in London two weeks ago, the judges themselves asked the American lawyers, "Is there anything stopping the American uh, uh, you know courts from slapping Assange with new charges the second he lands in America?" And the American lawyers themselves said, "No," and there's nothing stopping them from giving him the death penalty. There's nothing stopping them from uh, denying him First Amendment rights. This is the, the American lawyers admitting this. Just to be clear, by the way, they're not actually from the United States, but they represent the United States government. They're, they're British, though. But anyway, you, you know, it's, it's, it's really shocking. So I wouldn't trust what the, the U.S. government say. They can change the, the, the charges uh, immediately when he's in the U.S. And, um, you know, the conditions he will be put in as well. He'll go first to um, uh, the uh, Alexandria prison. He'll be put in special uh, under, sorry, administrative um, uh, detention, which is uh, ad seg, you know, it's basically is- isolation. And then when you, when, when he's absolutely uh, convicted, which is guaranteed, even, even though he didn't do anything, they'll send him down to Colorado to ADX Florence. And then over there, he'll be put in um, uh, what are called SAMs. These are special administrative measures. And uh, the warden of that prison uh, uh, you know, he said that basically when, once you go inside, you will never see the sun again and it is hell on earth. So, you know, these are the confirmed prisons and locations and conditions that await Julian Assange. And I think it's so preposterous that we were, we're even, you know, uh, contemplating this, that, that we, we, we give this to another human being who is accused of, of you know, what journalism? Uh, journalism. and then of course, you know, how can we call ourselves democracies when we do this to journalists? Even if the, the case is dropped this minute, he's suffered 10 years of persecution. We can never take that back. So it reflects so poorly on, on all of us, um, uh, you know, and, and our governments, uh, most of all, without question. Yeah, without question. Amen. 
Richard Medhurst, it's a great uh, having you here on Redacted for the first time. Been a fan of your work for a long time, and uh, it's been it's been great to it's been great to have you here and really educate us on this. We appreciate it. Thank you. I hope to be back again. It's a pleasure. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.